It's a pleasure to be here among those that truly fight the fight for all of us who love the outdoors. So I'm honored. Thank you. A few years ago, I spoke to the National Wild Turkey Federation and told them about a text that my wife had sent me. And uh, I talked to me the other day and said, man, you've got to do that again. That was awesome. So it wasn't part of the original talk, but now it is. Uh, you had told me a few years ago that I would have been texting. <coughs> the first thing I said was, what did you say? And what is that? I didn't start texting for probably four years ago. Maybe five. But my wife sent me this text, and uh, it's a little humorous. She understands how intense my schedule can be when I'm traveling a lot, so she'll send me something to lighten my day. So, I want to tell you about that text. It goes like this. Over 5,000 years ago, Moses said to the children of Israel, Pick up your shovels, mount your asses and camels. I will lead you to the promised land. Nearly 75 years ago, when welfare was introduced, the government said, lay down your shovels, sit on your asses and light up a camel. This is the promised land. Today, the government has stolen your shovels, taxed your asses, raised the price of camels, and mortgaged the promised land. And they're trying to take away some of our rights to enjoy public lands. I was so depressed last night thinking about health care, the economy, lost job savings, Social Security retirement funds, and my filing for Medicare in a couple of months at age 65. I called the suicide hotline. Had to press one for English. <laughs> I was connected to a call center in Pakistan, as our president would say. I say Pakistan. I told them I was suicidal. They got excited and asked if I could drive a truck. <laughs> Something tells me we're in deep trouble. <laughs> well, the text did humor me, so thank you, Mary, my bride, sitting right here. Stand up, just kind of say hi. Hello, I love you guys. So, kind of comes down to this: if you or I, or the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation, or Primo's hunting, for that matter, ran our business like the federal government's been doing, we wouldn't be in business very long. In the world of conservation organizations and preserving access to public lands for us and future generations of hunters and fishermen, the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation gets it. They fight the fight. From day one, the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation has stood for the hunting, and shooting heritage and has never even thought about dropping the goal of preserving access to public lands for future generations as well as outdoor recreation in general from its goals. You see, when I say get it, I mean that this great organization that you support knows that it's the manufacturers, the everyday hunter, the member, and the volunteer that makes this organization what it is. And those people are the ones that fund the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation day in and day out. Bottom line, you and I support what we love and cherish. Yes, we cherish the outdoors. Seagulls riding the currents above our reading. Topwater strike of a big speck. The crab trap full of brute crabs. The sound of geese or ducks overhead. The whitetail during the rut. The gobble of a tall timber Gabriel, a bobwhite whistling for companionship. The high-pitched challenge of a running bull elk. And just the opportunity to walk in an unspoiled place in the light of the setting sun. 
Bottom line, we just cherish the outdoors. That's why we're here. We, the supporters of the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation, get it too. We get that if we do not work to protect, preserve the future of hunting and shooting for us and for future generations, then who is? We work to educate those that have not been so fortunate to be exposed to wildlife, wildlife habitat, and the shooting sports. <laughs> we want to teach them the importance of all of this so we can preserve it for future generations. For those of us lucky enough to understand the role of healthy wildlife, and healthy wildlife habitat, and how it plays in our lives, we owe it to mankind to share the knowledge and appreciation. Without the wetlands to filter our water, without woods and wilderness to enjoy, our lives are not as rewarding or healthy. You see, we're all consumers of this earth, every one of us. Whether you're a vegetarian or you eat a lot of meat like me. And it's up to us to be wise consumers and to complement God's handiwork. A heartfelt thank you to the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation and the National Assembly of State Caucuses for all you do and for your bipartisan support. I'm here because of my lifelong Mississippi. And I care about Mississippi and the future of our public hunting and shooting. I was born in Jackson, state capital, and spent some time of each summer right here on the Gulf Coast. Matter of fact, when they started building this place, the Beau Rivage, we thought it was over. My parents bought a home in 1957, about three quarters of a mile straight north of here, on Langley Point in Back Bay. So at the age of five, my summers were spent here. My dad was in the restaurant business. He worked all the time, so mother would bring the three boys. And as we got older, we each should have a friend. We learned to catch snakes. Caught a snake one time proud of him. Daddy had come down that particular weekend. I was sitting under the ping pong table playing with the snake. And all of a sudden, Daddy reached very slowly, grabbed my hand, and jerked me as hard as he could away from that snake. He said, son, I know you love all these critters, but you have to know that some of these things are poisonous. He pinned that head, that snake's head back and showed me the fangs of that piggy rattler. Why that thing didn't bite me, I don't know. But I learned what a hard head catfish was. I learned the hard way. I got thin and it ain't any fun and it lasts for not just a little while. I learned to catch gaff tails. Big catfish with fins that long. I learned what a sheep bed was, what a drum was, what a speck was, what a redfish, a stingray, a shark. I got a dinghy with two oars so I could row my little boat out in the bay. Had to stay out of the ship's channel where the big shrimp boats and big other vessels came in. And I'd go all the way to Ocean Springs Bridge, just due east of here. And I'd put my little anchor out, the drum and the sheep head were bigger there. And I could also row to Back Bay Bridge, which was taken out by Hurricane Camille in 1969. I latched into something one day, I was by myself, pulled my little anchor, the thing was pulling hard. Thank heavens, this fish headed east, which was toward the house. I finally got him in. You know, I thought I was an old man in the sea. It was about a 20 pound gar. I had caught a dinosaur before I was fired up. I love the outdoors. And all it has to offer. I started Primo's in 1976. In 1986, video became available and we started shooting video and sharing it on TV and on video. Game calls was my primary product at the time. We have some 650 products now, including not only game calls, deer, turkey, elk, geese, ducks, cows, and numerous more. 
But we also have a top-rated show on the Outdoor Channel. We manufacture hunting blinds, apparel, game show cameras, and hunting accessories. Our home is just about 20 miles from Jackson, northwest, in Madison County, in a town called Flora. It's kind of like a little Mayberry town. I believe that you protect what you love, and it has been and is my sincerest effort to share the outdoors with as many people as I could. Through my love and passion, the outdoors, I'm involved with conservation-minded organizations like the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation. In 2012, pretty much was bought by Vista, as Jeff mentioned. Mark DeYoung is our CEO, and he's the chairman of the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation. As many of you have heard here, this is the largest outdoor-related company with 51 brands, and Primos is proud to be one of those brands, with some $3 billion in sales in those brands. Vista supports the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation, the conservation groups, and I'm going to name some of them, because they're all important. The National Wild Turkey Federation, Pheasants Forever, Quail Foundation, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, Ducks Unlimited, Delta Waterfowl, Safari Club International, as well as the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the Outdoor Industry Association. In addition, as you heard today, in another meeting, Vista paid 84 million in excise taxes on the Pittman Robertson Act, seven billion dollars in hunting, fishing, and bird watching and wildlife activities. All of these are very important to protect, to promote, and enhance. But the impact that these activities have on our social and family heritage is immeasurable. I know I'm talking to the choir here, but there are many of you that I've met and talked to, some of you that I know. This is your lifestyle. This is, this is what your families do. This is what you look forward to. You can't put a dollar in your own. My persistence and dedication to quality led to a lifelong career promoting and sharing the outdoor world with others. I had a small vision of what I wanted to do, but God had even bigger plans. As I said before, you protect what you love and what you cherish. So my goal was to share this part of God's creation with as many as I could, so that I could have a chance to fall in love with gay men, non-game animals, and the places they call home. I want to thank you for supporting the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation for the time, the biggest investment you've made in being here. And the work that they do to protect and give us all opportunities to enjoy hunting, using the outdoors, and shooting. Thank you, too, for giving me this opportunity. I want to close with a little video this is just about three minutes long.